We are going to play with some drugstore makeup. I actually have in front of me a bunch of drugstore makeup that reminds me of high-end makeup that I own or that I used to own but has been discontinued and I'm gutted over it. I have found, I don't know, just several things. Things that mimic Westman Atelier and Hermes and Dior and by Terry. Tom Ford, I have so many great dupes and I thought we could do a summertime get ready with me and I would do a little like unpopular opinion. I don't know, we will see where this takes us because I was hoping to spur a conversation in the comment section about a couple of subjects that have been on my mind lately. Probably will get me into some trouble, but that's okay. I just think it's great for discussion. So if you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and this should be fun. Let's get into it. Let's start with foundation. I picked up this foundation from CoverGirl. It's not brand new or anything like that. Like that but it is new to me and it is their clean fresh this is their clean fresh skin milk I realized that it reminds me a lot of my Hermes plain air now this foundation is 70 bucks this one is under 10 so you know obviously this is a better deal so this is what it looks like and I am just going to put it on in kind of the areas where I tend to have a lot of redness and hyperpigmentation. I'm just gonna bounce it in with, I think this is from, I can't remember who this is from. I wanna say that this is from like Elf or something like that. It's just a cheapy sponge. Okay, first subject I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about, and this is the one that's gonna get me in trouble, I'm sure. I wanna talk about medical grade skincare. And I wanna talk about your opinion, how you see medical grade skincare. So when I worked in the doctor's office, I carried Obagi, which is considered medical grade skincare. We also carried Color Science and Elastin. So they carried a bunch of medical grade brands. And so I am not at all in any way saying that medical grade that category of skincare is bad. I'm not saying that at all. What I do think is, is that not all medical grade is necessarily better than the drugstore. And just because something calls itself medical grade doesn't automatically make it better. And the idea that just because it's at the drugstore makes it less good always isn't true. That's just not true true the other thing about medical grade skincare is that there is no there's no regulation on calling yourself medical grade or not any brand can go ahead and call themselves medical grade and dispense their products through websites that carry medical grade they could go through the doctor's office there's no there's no you know you don't have to go through some gauntlet to get awarded the name medical grade it's not like you have to apply to become medical grade there isn't that doesn't exist. So I just think that it's really, really important to know that there are tons of fantastic medical grade products on the market. Yes, but there's some crap medical grade products too, you guys. I mean, I have used some medical grade stuff that isn't good, that is fragrance to all high heaven, that doesn't leave a nice texture, that was ineffective, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that is my unpopular opinion, or maybe it's a popular opinion, I don't know. I would love to hear what you think in the comment section. The next thing that we're gonna use, this is by L'Oreal, speaking of the mass brands. This is their True Match Super Blendable Crayon Concealer. This reminds me so much of my beloved Westman Atelier Vital Skin Stick. When I use this, I feel like the finish is really similar. Now this is like, I don't know, 12 bucks or something like that. And of course this is, I think $68. It's either 68 or 75, I can't remember. You do get more in the Westman Atelier than you do in this. This is fantastic. I love it for doing what I just did and then going back in and just hitting spots that need just a little bit more attention and you can kind of have that no makeup makeup look kind of thing i have a bunch of hyperpigmentation here so i can go and just spot correct with 
a stick like this, or I could do that with the Westman Atelier and a brush. And I find it literally leaves a very similar skin-like, really nice finish. Ooh, you know what? That was the first time I used that CoverGirl. It might be pilling. It, it is pilling. That's interesting. I have on my skin today, I did my normal skincare and I finished off with my Tatcha. This is the, the silk sunscreen. And this is not pilled on me before that I can think of. I don't think so. So it's gotta be that cover girl. So note to self, be careful with what you put on underneath that cover girl. But I love this little stick for, you know, just hitting some of those points that you need a little more coverage or you could use this alone for a really truly no makeup makeup look and just hit the parts of your face where you feel like you need a little, you know, just a little bit of correction. Anyway, I'm hoping that you guys will leave me your opinions in the comment section. I'm so curious. I've talked about this in videos in the past, like a few years ago, I talked about it in a video and um, I know people have really strong opinions. And I gotta tell you, one of my dear friends here on YouTube and just in life is Leah from Skin Beautiful RX. She runs a medical grade skincare store. And I think so highly of her and her opinion and her knowledge as an esthetician. She's incredible. And so I definitely don't want anyone to think that I think that medical grade skincare in general is bad. I don't think that at all. I think that it's great. What bothers me is that there might be people who genuinely either don't want to or can't afford some of that skincare because it is really pretty expensive across the board, generally speaking, that they would ever think that they couldn't also just have great skin at a, you know, drugstore prices. Of course you can. I mean, it's ludicrous to say otherwise. It just is. Anyway, so that I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I'm hoping that you guys will weigh in in the comment section. Okay, next let's talk about a really exciting discovery. I use the Tom Ford. Um, this is the eyeliner. It's double-ended, so two sides of eyeliner. Well, I was at the drugstore recently and I saw that Revlon, I have a black and I bought a brown. Revlon has this um, two-in-one eyeliner and one side is a liquid and it's not a pen, it's still a little bit of a brush and then the other side is a pencil. And I was like, that is such a great idea and it's similar to the Tom Ford. It's a similar concept. In order for me to kind of fake out to make my eyes look maybe more almond, I have been only lining the inner corner of my eyes and not the outer corner. I'm not doing any wings or anything like that to try and lift my eyes. I'm just making the dark focus on this inner corner and I'm kind of liking the way it looks. So this guy looks like this on one end, that's the pencil. So this is the other side. So it is more of the traditional kind of little paintbrush, but it's super duper fine. So what I've been doing is I've been getting most of the product off of the brush and then I go in and I do hold my eyelid like this and I lift my eyebrows as much as possible and I go in just in the outer corner as close to the lash line as I possibly can get. And I gotta tell you guys, this stuff is bulletproof once it's on it on. It really, really sticks around all day. I removed my makeup uh, at night, and of course, and found that the next day I still had a little bit of remnants of this eyeliner on my eyes. It stuck around so long. So I'm gonna do the other eye real quick. So then I let it dry for a minute and what I have been doing with the Tom Ford is I go over it with one of my By Terry um, Ombre Black Star Sticks. I, I've loved these for so long. They are expensive. So you've got uh, Bronze Moon and Misty Rock. The Misty Rock is the one that's a little bit more of a kind of mauve purpley color. Okay, so I picked up a similar product from the brand Julep. This one just called my name because I think it's so beautiful. And I personally think that a lot of times as we get older, um, I think that matte sometimes just looks 
just looks prettier. And I love that taupey color. And I think it would be beautiful in the summer. I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful color. We're gonna take that julep. And what I do is I literally draw at the lash line across, just go over it a few times. And I'm gonna go under, right at the lash line. Then I'm going to take, I just have a pencil brush from Suku, Suku, I've been using this forever, and I just blend it out. So it's this very, very simple eye makeup look. And then I go under. I didn't have a new mascara to share, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my Thrive. This is in the color Crystal. It is a brown color. I love this mascara. I've loved it forever. So I'm going to put this on. I will fast forward this part. Okay, the next thing I wanted to share with you guys is not from the drugstore, but this is a dupe, in my opinion, of a discontinued product from Dior. And it was a lip liner that was super cool toned. And I used to wear it way back, like, I don't know, late 90s, early 2000s, and it was called Linen. And it was almost like a purple gray. Well, House of Siage, I hope I'm saying that right, came out with some lip liners and I ordered one. And this is in the color Ultimate Pout. It reminds me so much of that color linen from Dior. And I'm so excited to have it. It is not inexpensive. I wanted to share it with you because if you are like me and sometimes there will be these products that went, that, you know, that got discontinued or whatever, and you would give anything if you could just find something that really, really looked like it, this really looks like it. I mean, to me, it looks, it looks just like it. Okay, the way I've been doing my lips lately is I've actually been going across my Cupid's bow, straight across to kind of give the illusion more of having more lip in the middle kind of up so that it gives them more of a bow instead of, you know, being longer as the older I get, the longer, you know, horizontally my lips get. So I've just been doing that across there. I've had people ask me, you know, did you get lip filler? Did you? And I'm like, no, I've just been doing my lip liner <laughs> differently. So, and then I just go under. Okay. The next product is from Wet n Wild and this is the best lip gloss and it reminds me so much of a discontinued clay de Peau lipstick that was way too expensive and i have some because i found some on ebay but it is there this is an old version of lipstick from clay de Peau. they do not sell it anymore they don't sell this color anymore super duper pale pink and I loved it so much. I loved the formula. I loved the paleness. I would pair it with lip liner and I just, I just loved it. Can't even find this anymore. In fact, I think I was able to get backups on eBay for a while and I don't even think that exists anymore. Well, this one from Wet n Wild is called Snuggle Sesh, pretty sure. And it's a lip gloss, but it's a very, very similar color. You can see here. It might be just a skosh darker. I think that actually makes it a little bit better. It makes it a little bit more wearable that it's not quite so light. And this is like $2 and change. It's so inexpensive and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous lip color. I'm just like, I bought a backup already. I'm like at $2.20 or something. I don't even know how they make it like that. That's crazy. So I put it on with the house of sillage and i swear i'm taken back to 1998 which a year ago i would have been like no way and all of a sudden now it seems like the 90s are cool again and a little bit of the 80s and i'm like i'm not so cool with the 80s the 90s i'm okay with the 90s now i'm okay with it so then i just kind of blend it a little so that i don't totally have that overlined brown with the light underneath but I love that lip gloss, you guys, for $2 and change. So if you are into, you know, like pale lips, it also has kind of like a vanilla cake scent. It's so, it's just a fantastic lip gloss. I love it. Okay, next we're gonna do a blush. I picked up this blush from Revlon. This is Insta Blush. It's from their Photo Ready line. 
and I think that this is absolutely gorgeous. This just reminds me of the Westman Atelier blushes. It is just a cream blush in a stick. It is beautiful. It kind of reminds me of their newest shade offering that is sold out. It might be just a little bit more pink. It does have a little bit of a, um, it's not a shimmer, but it is a radiance to it. So you almost get like a blush and a highlighter at once. And you literally can just swipe it on and then you tap it out with your fingers. It is super duper pretty. And again, of course, depending on your preferences and whatnot, the Westman Atelier is a little bit, um, you know, the ingredients might be, you might like the ingredient deck better. But as far as just being makeup, this is absolutely just as pretty. Okay, for brows, I have been using forever the Arches and Halo. This is a little brow product that is, I don't know, $12, $13 or so. You get them at Target and it reminds me of the Anastasia brow pen. There are several brow pens out there now. Um, it reminds me of that. This is in the color Mocha Blonde and it's a tiny bit too dark for me, but I like this for putting on like feather hair looking strokes. I do have my eyebrows like micro shaded, micro bladed or whatever, but they've kind of faded and so I have to go back in and give them a little oomph. And so I put this on and I go right in the middle and I just do a few hair strokes, but it's definitely as good in my opinion. It might even be better than the one from um, Anastasia or Anastasia, however you want to say that, um, because it seems like it lasts longer. Now, what I'm going to show you next is a product that reminds me very much of Benefit uh, Give Me Brow, and it also reminds me of Tom Ford. This one is from Wet n Wild and it is their Brow Sessive. <laughs> so it looks like this and it's just a little, you know, brow mascara. Everybody's coming out with these. I want to say that this was also around five bucks. This is in the color brown and I think that it is fantastic and absolutely just as good as Tom Ford. It just tames your brows gives the hair a little bit of color and you know makes your brow kind of stay in place. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is it is new to me and it is not drugstore, but I wanted to share it since we're doing a get ready with me and it is the Makeup by Mario. I picked up the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. Now for me, I got it in light medium and I also picked it up in medium because I wanted to use this as a bronzer. Now it has kind of a neutral with a hint of warmth in there. I would not use this on my entire face. It is, they say that you can use it to warm up your entire complexion. So I'm going to use this as my bronzer and I'm just going to go around the perimeter a little bit and a little under my blush. I really feel like bronzer now for me, is also kind of a way to give dimension to my face. I don't necessarily need bronzer to look more bronze. I like it because I feel like it definitely just gives my face a little bit of shape. So sometimes I'll do here, even though it's a little bit warm, so it's not meant to be, you know, a contour, it can help because it does provide a shadow and it's so sheer that it works out okay. Okay, so that is the completed look. And basically I feel like all of these drugstore products, except for this cover girl, which I'm gonna figure out, but they all perform as well as some of my most beloved expensive makeup products. So I always think that that's such a fun thing to really drive home, that whether it is makeup or it is skincare, that you can find great stuff at all price points for sure. And it is okay if you love the high-end stuff and it is just fine if you will never spend your money on that. So, you know, there's room for everybody. Everybody can decide how they wanna spend their money and everybody can have good skin and everybody can have nice makeup regardless of the price point or the marketing that happens to us.
I hope you will leave your opinions in the comment section and let's have a discussion down there. I'm really, really curious to hear what you think about the whole medical grade skincare and you know, just how you feel about it. What's your experience? Some people are going to tell me that they never had good skin until they started using medical grade skincare. And what I will say to that is that is awesome that you figured out something that worked for you. Definitely not saying that medical grade skincare doesn't do a good job or there aren't great things in that category. I'm just saying you don't have to be rich to have good skin, period. I 100% believe that. So anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.